Hello, how's everybody doing? Welcome back to the channel. Um, a viewer contacted me on YouTube and uh, asked me if I would do a, a setup video on how I got my Titan 13.5 rigged out. And I'm planning on going fishing tomorrow. So I picked, a, pick, picked it up out of storage today and figured what would be a, you know, a better time to do it than, than right now. So um, I went ahead and uh, configured it out how I would take it to the marsh. That's the, the current configuration that it's in right now. And after I show you that one, um, I'll show you how I uh, run sheephead with it, which is pretty much almost a bare bones of, of what it is right now. I take a lot of stuff off of it. But uh, <clears throat> I guess we can start with the, uh, the tow vehicle. I, I tow my Titan with a, a 2014 Titan, <laughs> Nissan. And uh, it's a really good truck. Um, it, I mean, it's it's overkill for towing a, a kayak, but I, I used to have a 22 foot Palm Beach, but I sold that, so I, I still have the truck. So uh, it's a pretty good truck, hadn't failed me yet. Um, let's go ahead and go to the trailer. The trailer is a, a Maloney Microsport trailer with the 12 inch uh, highway tires, and. When I got it, it was uh, it was the C-wing package, so it had the Maloney C-wings on it, uh, set up for for two kayaks, and I got it off the of Facebook Marketplace for a deal, and uh, brought it home and configured it to where uh, I could easily haul this Titan this Titan on top of it. The first thing I did with the trailer, though, was I took the uh, the stock lighting off. The stock lighting was it was yeah just i don't want to say junk it was just uh you know the the least that they could do to to have lights on it so i took the uh stock lighting off and went with uh, submersible leds now <clears throat> the second step was to take those maloney c-wings off and uh after i took those off i was trying to figure a way to to haul this titan safely and this is what i came up with this is a piece of four by eight treated plywood, three, three quarter inch treated plywood. And the blocks are made with treated two by four. And this is a two by six, just this piece right here. And then the piece on the other side. What I did was I got some, uh, some of that Gorilla contact adhesive, smeared it all over the uh, four by eight. And um, I went to Lowe's and picked up this indoor outdoor carpet and just so happens they had gray which matches my color scheme so i got that and the four by eight that stuff just lays flat just takes a two takes a little less than two pieces to do that now <clears throat> that stuff sets up real quick it's real fast grabbing you can see it's not trying to come up or anything um the bunks, <clears throat> how I made the bunks was I centered the kayak on the 4x8 and I laid 2x4s down to see where I needed to have the, uh, the guides to where I could guide this trailer or guide the kayak onto the trailer. So <clears throat> same for both sides, just evened it up. Um, this is one long continuous piece of 2x4 right here. Covered that with uh, the indoor outdoor carpet also. You can see that there are staples here. I tell you, if you're going to do a job like this, you're going to have to have a, a pneumatic stapler. It makes the job so, so much easier. So, um, I went ahead and put that down. It's secured with staples. This is a 2x4 here with a two by six on top, and that provides the blocking in the front so the, the kayak can't move forward, Annie. <laughs> and uh, just to give it an additional bit of uh, cradling side to side, I added another two by four here on top with just some angle brackets. So that worked out pretty good. All right, to tie it down, I use ratchet straps. 
got one in the front and one in the back. Uh, they attach these little eyelets I put on the trailer right here. There's one on each side. Hooks go through across. And um, I do not haul this kayak with all this stuff in it. When I haul this kayak, it's pretty much just a bare kayak. Um, I leave the wheels on and that's about it. Everything else comes off and goes into the truck. All right, so the ratchet straps supply the um, the downward pressure. Now, <clears throat> this carpet is very slippery, so uh, this this kayak moves around. Um, if it, if the trailer gets on an angle, like at a boat ramp, this kayak will pretty much try to slide right off the back. So what I do <clears throat> to stop that is I'll put a uh, bungee cord from this eye here to this handle. And um, that'll stop the kayak from sliding back when I'm going down the ramp until I'm ready. Now this little rope right here goes through these eyes right here when these power poles are not attached. They go through the brackets and they go through this other eye right here. And what that does is, is, is it, it supplies a forward pressure to where the kayak doesn't slide backwards when I'm hauling it up and down the road. All right. I'm sorry guys, this might be a long video, but there's there's a lot of stuff on this boat. Alright, in the front hatch. Alright, in the front hatch, I pretty much got... I've got my extra scuppers. I've got the bungees that I was telling you about that I attach on these eyes right here. I've got a bow line and I've got uh, a set of sea tug uh, sand wheels. This right here is my repair kit. And for this, I have the screwdrivers and the pliers and um, all the extra parts I need in case I break down on the water. I get an extra propeller, I get an extra handle, uh, shear pins, and everything that I would need to, uh, to do any repairs out on the water. Uh, unless it's like a major disaster and then I'll just go in. Okay, my power supply is I've got a yak power uh, rigged up to this little clear plastic ammo box and the battery goes inside here and it's kind of propped in by this little foam thing and it's got an inline fuse and everything so with this yak power I can control one two three four I can control five five devices but right now the only thing I'm controlling is my uh, my fish finder <clears throat> so let's put this thing back in close her back up um, this configuration is the uh, the product of a um, couple of weeks having the kayak at home uh, just kind of brainstorming going over my uh, configuration of my other kayak and pretty much taking what worked on that kayak and applying it to this one and you know taking what didn't work and just you know just throwing that out the window all right moving back we've got the uh, 701 drive and um, it's got the new propeller the 701 drive comes with the new propeller and the Wii guard um, I put a little uh, roto grip right here for a fish net, so I can't lower it and lower it down below the kayak because it's sitting on the trailer, and the trailer is a flat surface. So right now it's propped up, but when I put it down, I put my net right here, and my net sits across my, the front of my bow. <laughs> okay, let's move on back to my fish finder. The fish finder is a Lawrence Hook Two five triple shot and it's got the triple shot transducer which gives me side scan capability and uh i i really didn't want to mess with um the the stock transducer plate because to me it looked like more of a hassle than just hanging something off the side and this thing hanging off the side is working pretty good so far the uh, yak attack uh switch blade is what that thing's called so I've got my power run inside my yak 
with this Hobie through hole plug and the extra transducer cable I've just got tucked up inside one of these rod holders and that that holds everything out of the way for right now um, I do carry an anchor uh, I think you should always carry an anchor because you never know when uh, you know you get in trouble with your drive brakes or whatever you don't want to float around and float off so uh, have the Coast Guard come get you so I always have an anchor um, I really do not use it that much because I do most of my fishing in shallow water and since I bought the power poles I really don't use a, an anchor at all anymore so but I do carry it <laughs> all right uh, this is my catfish grabber and if you fish in salt water and you have to deal with hardhead catfish uh, get yourself a set of these these are absolutely amazing you've probably seen me use them in my um, one of my other videos but they make handling hardhead catfish a breeze so I carry four tackle boxes or four tackle um, bins. I usually keep two under the seat and two behind the seat. Uh, moving back, I got a um, mini zigzag cleat on both sides for uh, for any type of anchoring or lashing off I want to do to anything. Um, my seat, I keep it in the high position. I kept it in the low position for a couple of trips out and it, it's just so much easier to uh to pedal this thing with the, the seat in the high position okay coming back i've got the native watercraft uh sidekick and these are the uh basically natives version of like the the boondocks uh landing gear or whatever they call them but um these got like a little uh hex uh, system that that attaches the wheels you can put them in a lower position higher position um, you can take them on and off in the water putting them down in the water is a little it's a little uh, tricky because the wheels float and you kind of got to grab this thing and maneuver it and and stick them in it's so like when you're going to the dock you want to put your wheels down you got to have a good grip on this thing or else the wheels will go this way or the wheels will go that way and give you a lot of trouble all right for my rod uh storage i've got ram tube uh 2008 rod holders um i got three on each side so i can carry a total of six rods in the back and i can also carry one in the front uh rod holder the front facing rod holder um i've got lashes for all of them in case i want to get into uh uh, you know cross the channel or whatever a lot of boat traffic or I'm in wind and the the wind is picked up and you know the water's gotten a lot rougher and I can I can lash these and if I flip I won't lose my uh, I won't lose my fishing poles um, these are my two major fishing poles these are Matsuos they're medium uh, medium action rods I've had these for a very long time and if you've watched my videos, you'll see that these are the rods that I use the most because even though I got them in like 2008, they're, they're still functioning just almost perfectly. I mean, if I, could, if I could find another set of those things, I'd buy them. Um, this is the only bait caster I keep on this boat. It's a Akuma Helios. And uh, that's pretty much the only bait caster that I can cast in heavy wind that won't backlash <clears throat> and cause me a lot of trouble. Um, I keep a full-size cooler on my left side. I keep my soft plastics back here. It's where I can just reach back here and grab them real quick, grab that handle, pull them up. This, this is the tackle box that holds my uh, trays. If this flips open you take that flip it open all four of those trays will fit in there and up top I carry my extra line bug spray air horn flay knife I get my uh, uh, Cajun thunders my popping corks fluorocarbon keep my procure some extra line and that's really handy for um, charging GoPro batteries when you're out on the water too you can go ahead and set it up to the charger, put it up underneath here, and it's protected from uh, protected from wind and and rain stuff. 
Um, on this left side, I keep uh, a Shakespeare, and I just picked this up. This is a Penn Fierce 2 2500 series stiff action rod. I use that for jerk baits, and that is an awesome, awesome combo. All right, coming back to the back, I've got my visibility flag, a Yak Attack visibility flag with the built-in light, and um, my anchoring system. I've got uh, two power pole micro anchor spike drivers, and uh, I think this is the only kayak that's made that accepts two of these, and they've got uh, plates specifically for mounting them. So I just went ahead and said, well, since it's got two mounting places, I'll get two micro anchors. I don't want to put down an anchor and then swing around in the wind, which is what I was doing with a normal anchor. So now when I'm drifting around, I put the anchor down, I just stop. I don't go like this. I just stop in whatever direction that I'm facing. And it's really easy to do too, because I mean, if you're, you know, you're drifting around, you see a nice spot, maybe a washout or something like that, where some flounder might be holding, you just pick up, you know, you just grab your lanyard and double tap it. And down your spikes go. And they'll adjust themselves. They've got a wave function to where if you're in waves and uh, it senses that it's loose, it'll go ahead and uh, it'll go ahead and reset itself and uh, drive those spikes down some more. And uh, you now if I'm like, well, I don't like this spot anymore. I'm going to go somewhere else. Just double click it again. Up the spikes go. And I start pedaling. Okay, on this side, I've got a uh, an anchor trolley. Um, to me, that's I mean, that's pretty much a standard piece of equipment, an anchor trolley. Uh, they're always handy. You know, you never know when you're going to be in water that's too deep for your for your power poles. For me, if I look on my depth finder from where my transducer is mounted. And uh, the distance between the transducer and the bottom, if that distance is six feet or less, I can use my power poles. If it's deeper, then, and I want to stop in that position, then I'm going to have to use my anchors or my, my regular uh, claw anchor. All right, on this side, I've got this little paddle clip right here. Now, what I use this for is when I'm in the marsh and uh, my drive is up. I'll be pulling around with this paddle and uh, if I come up to a little um, cut or a little um, pond or something and I see some tailing reds in there then I'll just set this put this down right back there and I'll set that right in that holder and I'll pick up my fishing pole I usually have my fishing pole right here or in the holder and I'll go ahead and make a cast all right, over here in the trays, I've got my regular fish grippers. It's the uh, the fish grip made in Mississippi, Jackson. I tried off brands. Uh, the first one I ever got was a Rapala from Walmart. It was black and white and red. Absolute garbage. Do not buy it. The grip is not strong enough to hold anything. I had a guy uh, a couple trips out. He had one of those grabbed a flounder with it, held it up so I could take a picture. That flounder started flopping and it went in the water. That guy was very upset. Um, that's my bigger one. I keep a smaller one right next to it. Uh, attached to the um, landing gear. And this one is on a float. So if I'm ever uh, in a position where I need to put a fish back in the water, I've got to have it out of the water for, or in my possession for a, a, a longer period of time. I'll go ahead and put this on the fish and I'll drop it overboard. And this fish grip is on a float and it's also on a, a quick release ball. This ball here is what comes with a, the uh, micro anchors so you can release the, uh, the tension on the anchors in case you ever get stuck or whatever but the, this kayak is so big that i can stand in the back of it so i really don't need these things 
but I think it's really cool that it just sits there. And I mean, that's real solid. If you put a fish overboard, I mean, unless it's like a, <laughs> a huge redfish or a tuna or something, it's not going to come off of there. So, and I just keep those hooked to my landing gear there. Um, my fish measuring board. Got all the little lines marked off. And uh, the markings for all the, uh, the major fish that I catch, sheephead, um, flounder, redfish. <clears throat> so I don't know if you can see this too well. I might have to do this from the other side. Let's go to the other side. All right, over here I got my yak power. Got my yak power switch right there. That runs down here into that box that you guys saw. And I've also got a, another um, power pole switch right there. So in case my lanyard stops functioning, I've got more, uh, more control options. And these, these power poles, they're, they're really awesome. Uh, if you, there's, a, there's an option where you can run wires to them down into your kayak, into a battery. But I've got the battery packs. But even with a wire option, they're still remote control. They're, like, they're uh, Bluetooth. So pretty much you can always control it with this or you can control it with that switch over there. So I, I think they're really, really neat. They can be, uh, can be divas at times. If you have the uh, setup to where you have a power pole on the back of your kayak, I do not recommend transporting your power poles attached to your kayak because they'll be bouncing and stuff like that. And I mean, it's pretty, pretty complex equipment in there. So, I mean, it's got circuit boards and stuff like that. So you don't want that kind of stuff bouncing around. So I always take mine off while I'm going up and down the road, um, pull into the dock or whatever, and then I'll reattach them. All right, so that's pretty much my marsh configuration, uh, shallow water, uh, fishing river banks or anything like that, back, back bays and uh, out front shallow. Um, like if I'm fishing out of the harbor, right off the beach or whatever, then then this is the configuration that I'll use. And uh, I know a lot of you people are saying, man, <laughs> that's a lot of stuff on that kayak. But trust me, this Titan can handle it. I, I have had zero problems with any type of weight or being low in the water or anything with this kayak. This thing is an absolute beast. So by now you're probably wondering what these things are. And I'm gonna go ahead and change configurations for you. And I'm gonna show you exactly what those are. So I'm gonna go from marsh configuration to sheephead hunting configuration. Let's do it. All right, we are now in sheephead configuration. This is uh, primarily for uh, going up underneath docks and stuff like that. Uh, I got my visibility flag on there. Uh, I like to keep it there uh, if I can. If I go uh, under a dock or under a structure that's too, um, too shallow or too narrow, not enough headspace, I can reach back and I can unscrew this and take this off if I want to. Um, another big change is the landing gear. They're now in the back of the kayak. So if I'm done fishing and I'm headed back to the dock and I wanna go ahead and put the landing gear back on, I can reach back, grab the landing gear, put them back in the slots um, I mainly carry two, two sheephead poles. My sheephead poles are uh, Pen Pursuit 2s. They're 3000 series rods, or 4000 series rods actually. Um, really good for sheephead. I've got one strung with a 50 pound test braid to a 30 pound test fluorocarbon leader. And the other one is strung with 30 pound test braid to a 30 pound test fluorocarbon leader. Um, and basically what I just use is 
I use a half ounce uh, egg sinker and put in a knocker rig configuration to where that sinker protects the uh, the knot on the hook and this works really good for um, sheep head. This is a uh, one aught Gamakatsu octopus hook. It's not an octopus circle hook. It's just a regular octopus hook. Um, one of my storage boxes came up front. Uh, the other one that I kept is pretty much just weights and hooks. It'll be weights and hooks. And that's my sheep head, sheep head box. Um, I've still got all my other boxes. They're back here in case I need them. In case there's a lure that I want. If I see, you know, something popping up top or whatever, I can swap and, uh, and go to that. So I've still got all my tackle. I've just got most of it out of the way. So, uh, I mean, that's pretty much it with these bumpers. All those anchoring points that you guys saw, all those pad eyes, they hold this bumper on, this half inch uh, PVC pump bumper uh, covered with half inch um, pipe insulation foam. And the whole thing is wrapped in Gorilla Tape. So just like my other video on my Mokin, the bumper system, this is going to get tore up. When that gets tore up on them barnacles and stuff on the pylons, all you got to do is take another piece of Gorilla Tape and slap it on top of it, and it looks like nothing ever happened. But my anchoring system, where I have it to these uh, pad eyes, is just Velcro. They're Velcro strips, and you can see how it mounts just like that. So you just bring it up, take one in, slap the other one on top, and that thing is sturdy. It is not going anywhere. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do about these naked spots. I was thinking about putting a big piece of orange foam on there just to protect uh, the corners, but for right now it works. So we're going to go ahead and give it a shot and see what happens. I'm going to go... Uh, Go out for sheephead tomorrow in Gulfport Harbor, and uh, the weather's supposed to be perfect, so hopefully we'll have a good day. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you on the water.